Okay, so. Okay, you guys, Ralph Havens here, Miracles, Magic, and Coffee. This is a very special edition, and I'm very excited to um, introduce you to my friend, Gregory. Okay, you guys, Whoop. Ralph Havens like, here. Let me just turn this Miracles, down. Miracles, Magic, and Coffee. This is a very special edition. There's, there's two copies of us. There's two copies of us, so that's even more useful. So, yeah, I want to introduce you to Gregory Reese Smith, and he has quite a story, and the big idea here is these days i've noticed that everybody i mean everybody is so many people are talking about mindset and anxiety and imposter syndrome and anxiety is at an all-time high i mean that is like with what's going on the kids are having a really hard time everybody's talking about um how tough it is and um and then there's the entrepreneurs who are trying to do good in the world and um, bring their message of healing and help to the world and helping people make money and and they're all talking about this inner stuff, this mindset, this beliefs, this imposter syndrome thing. And I was actually watching the Olympic trials of track and field of athletics um, a week or so ago. And, um, and they used the word anxiety and imposter syndrome a lot. One guy literally dropped out of one of the races and he was just nervous. He said he was like, it was his mindset. And another one talked about, um, they were working with a psychologist to work on mindset. And, um, and so I've got all sorts of stuff that I've been through in my life that you know, I literally um, quit a job when I was in between um, semesters in college in the summer. I was near Dallas, Texas, and um, there was a, a group making um, building apartments, and these painters were there. And I thought, oh, I'll go get a job over there. So I went and was a painter's assistant for this was way back in the early 80s and um, like 80. And so if time, money was different then, but um, I was getting paid $147 an hour. And I felt so, and they were training me on how to do this painter's assistant stuff, this prep work. And I felt so um, imposter syndrome. I thought I'm not worth $147 a week to do 40 hours of work. And, um, and I literally quit and went and worked at a, a, um, a YMCA day camp for kids. And they paid a lot less, but I was then around kids instead of adults. And I was the camp counselor and, um, and I felt more comfortable. And they actually called me, the painters called me and said, Ralph, we need you. What are you doing? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And it was literally across the street. All I had to do was go to work, walk across the street. And said I drove partway across town to have a job that cost less money because I was not comfortable making $147 a, a, a week. So I've, 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 uh, obviously, I've changed that way of thinking lately and done a lot of work. Um, but I want to talk to Gregory about um, the way he uses he used, what you could basically say is he uses magic to help people get what they want in life. So I want to um, first just say um, thank you for being on, Gregory, and, and welcome, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure, Ralph. It really is. It's awesome. So so um, tell us a little bit about, because you have quite a story. You didn't, um, you're, you're technically a shaman. And, um, and so I want to know what that means. And also... You, you started off, um, you, you were a CEO of an international company, and um, now you live in Portugal with a life that seems pretty, pretty cool. So kind of tell us what, where, what, what you, you know, you can tell us about the CEO world and this transition and, and, um, and who you are. What, tell us a little bit about that. I uh, guess uh, really this is this story in that sense Ralph started when I was seven um, I was hospitalized to have my tonsils removed mm. and uh, whilst I was there my father didn't come to see me in hospital my mother did and so I came up to believe that to attract his love I needed to be a successful businessman and so Having finished uh, going through university and, and starting out, I joined a small accounting firm called KPMG. And then from there, progressed through the corporate ladder and eventually became the CEO of a public technology company. And that was very exciting. And I had reached the summit because I was the senior person in a corporate job and therefore, I thought that this would attract the love of my father. Well, I came to realize it didn't. And actually, what it was doing was causing me severe back pain. Uh, and the back pain was because 
I was following the position rather than my purpose. Um, and it was the position that I'd been focused on for however many years. Uh, whereas my purpose is to use all my abilities, gifts and skills, which I've acquired over many lifetimes. And one day I was actually walking because uh, um, I, I hadn't been able to go to work because I couldn't drive. I was walking and over a, a nice piece of countryside and the, the puffy clouds were floating and it had been raining. And I realized that actually this was not my role. This is not giving me joy. There was no fun. Well, there was fun in one sense, but it wasn't giving me the personal joy. And so I then resigned and left the corporate world to follow my passion. And my passion is, is to help people to be themselves. Uh, all too often, as I know from my own personal experience, uh, we don't know who the hell we are. And yeah. so it was following that that enabled me to realize that I was a shaman and I'd been a shaman in four other lives. And so I had a whole load of skills and abilities and gifts and how will I to use them? Uh, and the next stage in the story in that sense was that uh, a friend came to see as or telephoned me one day to say that uh, I, she'd asked, been asked to take me up to one of the parts of the Stonehenge complex and we did that and we walked up and we didn't stay at Avebury which is the big stone circle there and I think that's far better and more attractive than Stonehenge itself because you can actually go up to the stones, you can touch them, you can feel them, you can sense the energy. And so we walked up to a place called Silbury Hill, which is all part of the complex. And by now it was 100% cloud cover and the rain was starting and the drizzle was coming down. And we walked down to Silbury Hill, uh, which is a conical shaped hill. So it's not exactly natural. And as we were walking down and coming to the bottom, bang, okay, I've been here before. And it was apparent to me that I, the last time I was there, I had forsworn my shamanic powers. I had said the person that I was doing a ceremony with had died and therefore I was never going to use my shamanic powers again. And so I then did a, a little ceremony, forgiveness, etc. And then as we were leaving, through 100% cloud, big beam of sunlight straight over the top of Silbury Hill at the Peribus. I said, thank you. And that was the message. Wow. And so and from there, I have now used my Chopinic powers in all sorts of different guises, uh, because after that, uh, uh, I was approached by a small Swedish company um, to help build some um, management coaching etc for them and IKEA enabled me to travel around the world and I would go to some of the places uh, such as a store uh, that was built on top of a Native American uh, burial ground and surprise surprise that store had violence had anger had a whole load of uh, what we would call negative energies associated with it and so I was then able just to release all that energy through using my Shabanic powers. And then, of course, the, the store. Now, that's not what Ikea asked me to do, but that's what I was doing for them, even though I was actually following a, a management development program, if one puts it that way, or a marketing program. Uh, you were a CEO. Then, that's what yeah. I was paying for. Yeah, you're a CEO at IKEA going around and noticing all this stuff around like um, burial grounds and energy and, and things. When, um, so you were, um, so you, you, I want to kind of check in on this. Like you went through a lot of change. Was it, um, you were a CEO of a technology company and then you became a CEO of, a, um, of IKEA and somewhere in there, you, um, you had the Stonehenge experience and then in the IKEA world, you were visiting all these places and you had um, these experiences. 
was it um was it one moment when you were like i'm gonna quit this stuff or was it um did something happen that was not so good or was there was what happened during that time like it's kind of like it's interesting that you you quit a job that obviously paid you a lot of money and you had a lot of status and prestige and you could travel around the world and um and then you you still changed um you, you quit that um did something yes. happen um uh, yes it did it was the intense back pain oh, that, that really stopped me uh, and so forced me to rethink what was i doing with my life oh and yeah it's okay. the back pain that then triggered okay if i'm if i'm not in alignment with what my soul is here to do yeah. therefore i will have conflict and that conflict will come up in some or manifest in wow. some form such as pain and discomfort that's a really big piece i remember once i um i was running and i had a physical therapy practice in san diego and therapist working for me and um our qigong one of our qigong teachers would come every wednesday and we would do a few hours of qigong and and um and i was always really busy i mean my wife would go get us take out food because i didn't even have time to barely do my notes before um the qigong guy came and then we would get home at like 10 o'clock at night and and it was like quite a lifestyle and um yeah. and then one time on a on the, the weekend run i fell and i hurt my shoulder pretty bad and I was like, oh man, I can't run. In fact, I can't even work. And so all of a sudden I went from being super busy to I was just hanging around my house and my therapist would come to my house here and there and work on me. Or I would walk to, no, actually I walked to the office at that time, I think both maybe a little bit. And I would get worked on for a week. And um, yeah. and so I, I had nothing to do, <laughs> I had nothing to do except just like hang out. And um, absolutely. And and I remember sitting there, I uh, my wife had got dinner for us before she gone. And but I was just hanging around the house and she went and got a sitter and I was eating the food and then hanging out in the waiting area for some reason because there's a pretty window. And um and our Qigong teacher walked in and he just stopped and he goes, smells like death. And I like it. And he didn't know that I had just spent like half a week unable to work and I was just like everything had stopped in my life. And when he walked in and he felt, he said, he literally said, it smells like or it feels like death. And, I yes. and it's like, so that's interesting um, that you had back pain and you knew somehow that this was a sign. How did you know it was a sign yeah. to like? Uh, it, it, that that was, I, I would say, um, if you put it another way, that was the start of my appreciation. And, and the back pain was there because up to then I hadn't listened to my body. I I, I played rugby until I was 40 and, and I'd done a few other things sporting wise. So. I'd, I'd had quote sporting injuries, yeah. but I'd always assumed that was because I was running too hard or I'd hit somebody or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, whereas actually it was messages and I wasn't listening to them. And the, the back, back pain, pain, rather like yourself, it gave me that period for reflection. And through the reflection, as I said, I was walking over some beautiful hills and okay, what the hell am I doing with my life? Wow, just why am I here? Why am I having this pain, et cetera, et cetera? And from there, then it, it spun off. And were you in the tech business then, or were you in the IKEA CEO business? No, I was, I was in the tech business. Oh, and um, then you went into radio I technology. So then you went into IKEA and then you got to travel. Oh, no, 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 no. Then I pulled back oh. from, from the, the technology business. I resigned and, and started my coaching business. And it was from the coaching business that then I was approached uh, 2005 by IKEA uh, to help develop a, a, a marketing management development program. And it's from there then I spent 10 years with IKEA um, traveling the world, helping grow the management of the various uh, countries, stores, you know, whatever it was, because of in IKEA terms, uh, a store is about a hundred million dollar business. Wow. Uh, so you, you, you can see you're, you're dealing with a good size business, not a diddy one. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so you can grow that. Yeah. So 
that sounds like a pretty sweet life. Like you get to travel, you're working for a really good <laughs> yes. I, I think I, I, I think I, I, I went through 20 odd countries and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's like, so, so, um, and you were doing coaching, so you were doing cool stuff yeah. with people and you were, uh, you were doing shamanic work under the surface and, and yep. uh, what made you, how did you get out of doing that? Like what made you stop well, that? Well, that, 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 that was again, one of these. So I, for example, I, I've been through the United States uh, three or four times, uh, and, a, and and I did a trip in 2013 with her when I took Caroline, my wife, um, and we went to Hong Kong, uh, and and then Tokyo, and then Australia. Oh. And after we came back from that, uh, I was talking to the guys in IKEA, and I said, do you I've, I've run through all these interesting countries are there any more that would keep me of interest and the answer was no and india at that time was about two or three years away if india had been on in should we say in the next year then i would have stayed for another year or two but there was no nothing of interest so we parted company Wow. And so, and then, and then did, um, and along this way, you were getting these shamanic skills. Did you have to go learn those skills or did they just kind of come to you like an epiphany that you were a shaman in a past life, a few past yeah. lives or what, how did you get those? How did that start? Well, I, I, I did, I did some um, courses to, to, to remind me, but after that, um, should we say, I have a good connection, Ralph, yeah. and it's from the connection. So, I, I read energy yeah. uh, and it, it's something that I've probably always had, but then denied and then allowed to, to, to come back again. You so me that, for example, I, I, I was working with somebody yesterday and uh, they, they had come to see me and uh, I said to them, okay, there's something that happened when you were 30. And uh, she uh, we worked through whatever was needed to do and and she wouldn't go to the age of 13 until we were actually in the process of packing up and she suddenly said ah 13 yes i was in a 17 car accident like how could you get that <laughs> i now see myself rising up from that accident so she had a near death experience is how one would describe it and so she could see herself floating around in above the accident. And what had happened was her soul had never really reconnected with her from the eight at that after that accident because it hadn't felt safe. So then we were able to do a little exercise to bring the soul back into her body. And when I came back into our living room, uh, my wife said to her, you look so different because her eyes were sparkling and, and she was really a different person from the one that had walked down with me to help um, address her issues. Wow. Yeah. And um, did you ever hear back from her after that? Like, how was her life different? Well, that was only a couple of days ago. So, <laughs> okay, so we need to find out. Yeah, that's. I'm, that's I'm waiting awesome. to find out. Yeah, but, so, uh, this is what. What, this is what, what, um, what, 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 what we've done was uh, we also discussed uh, a life-changing direction for her from from doing something similar to what you and I were doing in the sense of this is the job. And now go out and follow your purpose. Oh yeah, like so you. So it's like you. Um, you notice something shifted in her, kind of like your back Absolutely. thing. And then, um, and then you went and did a different version of of life. So she gets to go do this next part of her of her life after you um, notice this thing shift for her. Did whatever you do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 that that to me is the fun of doing what I I do because. I can see the difference. And uh, again, I, I, I use my wife, um, if, we, if I'm working with somebody that's come to stay, for example, um, in the house, and then I go and work with them in, in we have a room outside the house. Uh, and then they come back and my wife says, mm, 
I can see the difference. Yeah. And that's a sort yeah. of tick and, okay, I, I, I've done my job in that sense. Yeah. Um, was there any um, bumps along the road? Because you live in Portugal now. So, yes. uh, and you're a shaman in Portugal on a beautiful villa and, um, and you walk around gardens that are beautiful and have um, a beautiful setting and people come to see you and they have these yep. experiences and then life gets better. And um, when you went from Makia, was there anything you wanted, any, I'm kind of interested, like how did you go from that to, okay, I'm not gonna do it because India is not around the corner. So I'm just gonna quit. Did you just take time off? Did you guys go traveling? Did you have a powwow? And no, 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 far, no. Far, far, far more complicated. Than that <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I was working with IKEA um, when I was guided to move out of England and to move to Portugal. And so uh, we, we, we only looked at one place to buy in Portugal, which is this one. And uh, we came out because my wife had a whole food shop. And so we, we only, she was working six, six days a week. So we came out on a Sunday. We came here, we visited. Uh, I was talking to the vendor in what's now our kitchen. And uh, I'd said, okay, yes, we like the place, we'll buy it. Um, and then I said to myself, or I spoke out and said, can I have a sign that this is the right thing for us to do? And five, 10 minutes later, my wife came back in and because she'd been wandering around outside looking at the, 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 the overgrowth because it was totally overgrown, it was a ruin. Oh, wow. Uh, and she said, would you like to come out and look at this? So we went outside and there was a blue sky, about two clouds in it and damn great rainbow. So, okay, thank you. Sign. And, and so, so we then moved here in 2010. 2010. And, and you went from a really, really, really busy life to this um, ruins that then is now your villa. And um, was it just, um, was that a big transition? Like, did you all of a sudden, like, did you get, um, was it like, wow, I don't have to go to work and I don't have to travel and I can just walk? Oh, no, no, I'm, because I'm still working for IKEA. So oh, I, still I, I was traveling. Oh. oh, and you were still traveling from there. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then, um, yeah. and then um, but you, you ended up um, letting go of the IKEA thing and now you're, you're, you hang around and, and tell us about like, how that transition of like, because it's not like you're working really hard and traveling a lot and doing cool stuff. And then you've got this place. There was a time when you quit working and you're, you're um, now you just do your shaman stuff. What happened in there? Like, what was that? I, I, I wouldn't say just my shamanic stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I actually <laughs> cool. so, to me, to me I, I hear, I hear um, from you from time to time and I think, it sounds like he's just kind of walking around in his sandals in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> and then people come see him and they have these life-changing things and they go to mountains yeah. and walk around and, and, yeah. um, and Ab like, absolutely so, yeah, so um, give us a little bit more about what your life is what happened and how's your life what do you do yeah um, so for example um, i i focus on, on people that are wanting to make a change in their life or to turn it around the other way they may be successful, but they know there's something missing. Yeah. And so it, what I can do is I connect them with what's missing. So, for example, uh, there, was a, there was the lady that was here from Holland and, and we were sitting down uh, at the dinner table a couple of nights ago. And uh, I had another Dutch client that came uh, a couple of years back and he and I did some coaching and so uh, he called it kitchen coaching because that's where we did the coaching it, it was natural it just came up you know question raised I answered etc and so this this I've now phrased as dinner table coaching because she was saying her mother had been unable to, or she was constipated and she would had various visits to the uh, hospital and she'd been constipated for about five weeks, which must have been pretty intense, really painful. Yeah, that's pretty scary. And, and uh, I was able to say to her, well, actually, this is all triggered by something your mother did in January when uh, she had 
written a letter to her deceased father who had died in one of the gas chambers during 19, the, the Second World War. And she, her mother that is, uh, felt guilty because she had survived and her father had died. And so what I said to, to the lady was, okay, just light three candles, one for your father, or one for her mother's father, uh, one for your mother, and one for the family, and then do a, a little process of forgiveness. And then constipation disappeared because wow. the, 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 the belief that she was guilty because she had survived uh, had now disappeared. And so whilst that's not directly involved with uh, the people, my clients, to me, it is part of being a client because the lady was here as a client she has her own business she's she's working uh, in, in in mindfulness and so on uh, and yet it's her mother that actually has gained the benefit yeah it's it's um it's really quite amazing because right now there's so many people and um influencers um people with um you know seem to have everything you know ceos or big time influencers um big companies doing a lot of stuff. And there are so many talking about mindset and that you have to change your thoughts and you have the wrong beliefs and that think and grow rich idea. And if you could just um, visualize the right thing, it'll magically come to you. Your work is quite a bit different than that. It's like, you know, yeah, thoughts pop in and you can have certain beliefs. If it's connected to something that you're, happened with your grandfather, um, or even beyond that, um, yep. and then you can light three candles and things can be different and somebody can start going to the bathroom again after five Ab months. Uh, absolutely. That's like, that's because... a whole other way of thinking about like um, how the world works. Um, yeah, that's- I, I, see, I see the world, as I said earlier, as, as, as energy. Uh, and my purpose as a shaman is to create harmony between Father Sky and Mother Earth. And what we as a human experience, we distort that because of beliefs that we've established. So, for example, a um, couple of years back, I, I worked out that roughly 40 percent of the people that came to see me had a, an issue with money. Now, that's not just I can't earn money. It's also. Uh, I, I have a belief that whether it's 10,000, 10 million or 10 billion, as soon as I earn that amount or have that amount in the bank, it disappears. And that's because there's a belief that either, for example, uh, quite a few times uh, I've had somebody come to see me and they, rather like myself with another life, they have made a vow of poverty as a monk or a nun or whatever. Yeah, and so be... surprise, surprise, money doesn't flow or doesn't stay in their life because they have a vow of poverty. And so that vow overrides whatever they may be doing because that's the energetic footprint that they've established. And, and then the same with there, those like, that are- When you see something like that change and you have that, that awareness and you do your, your shamanic stuff around that, um, what have been some of the things you've noticed that, um, that are well, different? Well, I mean, the, 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 the simplest one would be uh, a lady I did some work with, and I think it was maybe a week or two weeks afterwards. It was a very short space of time. Uh, she had a, a refund that she knew nothing about from the IRS that appeared suddenly in the letterbox. Yeah. And so she'd opened the door to allow funds to flow into her life and the same with people that as I said whether they've had a a, a mental 10,000 or 10 million or 10 billion suddenly they've been able to go through it rather than hit it and fall back down again that's super cool yeah um and you've worked with people at the highest levels of business you know making the million yeah. dollars even more and, um, and so there's money things and it's not just like, you know, somebody doesn't have enough money. Some people have some money that seems like they have a lot, plenty of money, 
but they still can have money issues affecting them. That's Absolutely. Uh, really cool. Um, and then and, and the other aspect that I, I see, Ralph, is that um, we, we, we believe that we've come in and we, we have this, this life. Well, actually, it's all lives. And, and so we are the result of the experiences that we have gained over all the other lives that we have lived. And it's all those experiences that influence us, even though we're not aware of them. Yeah. And so you, you, many you, people... Have you seen that movie Slaughterhouse-Five? Yes. I mean, it kind of reminds me of that. Like, he's sometimes back in the war, and then sometimes he's in the future, or he's, he's there with his, um, his um, hottie girlfriend, um, in that one bubble at the end, and, and then he pops back and forth in different, I forgot what, he, I think he called it being unstuck in time or something, like Billy yeah. Pilgrim keeps moving throughout his life, but it's like he could access any of the spots of his life that might seem in the future or in the past, um, yep. but you're even at another level of, um, it might not even be just that one timeline, it might be yep. other timelines. It's, so it's multiple timelines, and, and, and to me, they're all coexisting. And then, so and then, I, 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 I didn't use past lives, I say other lives, because you, you couldn't go yeah, it's past simplistically it's backwards and forwards. Past. Yeah, it's like there, there's a um, past assumes there's a past. Um, I, re I remember once I was um, running with a guy that was a PhD in mathematics at um, University of Chicago, and he was on sabbatical, and we'd run, but um, he said, if the math is flowing, I'm not going to be at the run. So he like doing high level research with math, with numbers. And we had these great conversations about um, math and, and quantum physics and stuff, and because it's just interesting to me. And and um and now he was leaving. I can't believe I didn't get his contact information. But after months of being there in San Diego, I said, um, hey, he said, hey man, what in math is absolutely true? And he said, everything in math is true. And I said, everything? And he goes, yeah. Once you get past a couple of basic assumptions, and I'm like, what? What what assumptions are those? And he goes, oh, you know, like one plus one equals two. And I was like, oh. Yeah. And I said, if yeah. one plus one equal not ends up not being equal to two, what would that do? And he was like, that would like completely destroy my whole life. And um, but it's like, like <laughs> I knew that, that, that one plus one equals two was not a fact. It's an assumption. Like, what assumptions are we making when we say that there's one here that's separated from this? And that what are we saying that there even is something here or that there is a here? Are yeah. like we're kind of making a lot of assumptions when we say um, even the simple statement like one plus one equals two. It's a fact, right? Oh, absolutely. Maybe absolutely not. Right. So you you play in a world where it's like um kind of like whoa um what is real um but um but then it's like what's cool is um you play in that world and then um the other part comes in that I I like to think about like well is it useful? So it's like you've got these these um other lives and you got these other timelines and you have what happened to somebody's um, granddad in a war and um and like is it true um, another question might be like is it useful um and um and so um yeah you play in a very interesting place because so many people even in the mindset world and the entrepreneurial world um you know um tony robbins has made a whole thing about like you know, change your state of being and increase your motivation and how happy you are and, and um, get motivated and stay motivated and, and change your thoughts and change your belief. And Joe Dispenza, you know, um, has all these um, complicated um, meditations to like say that there's this energy field and that energy field and this and all this stuff. And it's like everything has, if one plus one equals two is an assumption, then all bets are off. Everything is an assumption. And what is really- Absolutely. But what's absolutely it's 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 very similar to um you have positive energy and negative energy well we don't want any negative energy but actually you you do want the negative energy because you it's all energy it's just the label we put on it suggests that we don't want this or we do want it yet in and, your world the you experience we we have are the result of the beliefs we have so if you change the beliefs we can therefore go forth and, and and do what it is we we incarnated to do it does seem like there's something we were here to do and i don't know if we all if everybody gets to do it and are it's like you know you didn't do it this time um but the cool thing about it within your stuff is 
um, people have tangible results in the physical world, like CEOs and other people, high level people of, you know, high level, like everybody's high level, I think, but, you know, like um, people that have made a lot of money, but are still questioning what it's all about. Um, yes. They, they have a measurable result in their physical world when they see you. It's kind of like, um, I remember I was watching a 60 Minutes interview with Tom Brady, the quarterback. I think he's won like yeah. six or seven Super Bowls. And after he'd won a couple of Super Bowls, he was having an interview on 60 Minutes. And, um, and the guy was asking him questions. And he goes, you know, he had, you know, two Super Bowl rings at the time. And he's married to a Brazilian supermodel. And he has beautiful kids. And he's the quarterback of the New England Patriots in the National Football League. And, um, and he says, you know, I got all this stuff. And then I was like, there's got to be more than this. This yeah. can't be all there is. And so if a guy that has that much fame and good looks and beautiful wife and um, plays football for the main quarterback, for yeah. the main if he is like um, getting everything he wants and he's like, there's got to be more than this. You see entrepreneurs that are at this stage of like, there's got to be more than this. And it's like to Absolutely. other people, it's like, are you kidding me? You've got like, you've got the dream life. Um, but there's these people that question things. And, um, and then yeah. you can tell us a little bit about like, um, you, 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 there's a lot of energy workers that play in the spirit world and use cards, tarot cards and crystals and, and play energy and, and heal things up. Um, but one of the things I noticed with um, that world is there's a lot of people in that world that don't make a lot of money. And then, yeah. um, and then there's, um, people that use mindset to like um, clear stuff in the way of making money. You made a lot of money. You um, had these questions about life. You changed your life and had and followed whatever this is. Spirit guides you to be a shaman. And now you people come to see you just out of the blue in Portugal and, and their lives change. Um, can you talk a little bit about money and spiritual healing and entrepreneurship and these CEOs that, seem to have it all, but they, they want more. And, and, you know, you play in this magical world. And the thing is, people have a, a, a real life shift. Tell us yeah. a little bit. I don't even know if there's a question in there, but um, it's an intriguing one because so many people, you, I asked, I asked my um, people in, on my email list um, over the years, um, how much of your problem, and they were coming to me for chronic health conditions and anxiety and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I said, how much of this your problem is solved by money? And like overwhelmingly 97% is like, you know, every, yeah, it's all, if I could make this much money, it's all solved. And I'm like, you have a life or death problem and money solves the whole thing. So it's like, people talk about money a lot. So talk about your, you know, money and CEOs and life purpose. And what is your take on all this? Well, if, if I answer the question indirectly at the start, Ralph, um, we all incarnate with a purpose. Now, our purpose as a soul is to evolve. And how do we evolve? We evolve through experiences that we gain. And so when we, we incarnate, we come in with the abilities, the gifts, the skills that are going to help us follow, um, if I put it as the divine plan that we've put out for ourselves to, in, in this life because there is a plan for each of us and we've part, cr part created that plan. It's not given because it will, it can evolve from, from our own actions. And so we come in with these abilities, gifts and skills. And often because of the experiences we have, we deny these abilities, gifts and skills. Therefore, we do not fulfill the purpose that we incarnated to do. And the result of that is evolution stutters because each of us has an impact on the big matrix. And if, if one part is not working, well, another part therefore can't work. And so it's to me, the purpose is to free everybody up so that they can live their purpose that the soul is looking for now every soul looks to evolve and then my purpose is to help others fulfill their their own purpose so how can you tell everybody has a soul name oh. uh, my soul name means soul connector mm -hmm. and so there are two aspects to that one individually and so as i, I mentioned earlier uh, quite often 
parts of the soul and the soul can split into 12 parts disconnect and so they're going around in the old story that's required the disconnection and therefore the person cannot progress and then the soul connection which is 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 going up to the divine the creator and so my purpose is is to achieve both of those now that's nothing to do with money that's about the soul and the soul is concerned about how it's going to evolve uh, for some it would be clearing out the the vows of poverty for example that were made in other lives for others it would be removing the limit that they have imposed on themselves back to whether it's 10,000 or 10 million or 10 billion and for others it's just allowing money to be what it is which is an energy it's neither good or bad and and so yes i agree with you totally i see many therapists of one form or another who do not have much money because they believe money is a bad energy rather than it is just energy and so if i can help people understand money is just a means of of, of transmission from my pocket to your pocket etc then why do why do i put good or bad on it the, the, yeah. as soon as you you step back from the good and bad judgments everything flows and if you want to have flow in your life then be aligned with what your soul is looking for and then everything will flow when you're not aligned it doesn't flow and that's why i come back to my experience with the uh, back pain and one or two other things and and possibly again with, with your shoulder etc yeah what am i here to do these are great things um when you're not on your sole purpose um is it like is it i mean i it's like you um i i fell certain things happened throughout life and then looking back you go oh this was my training i was a little um i needed to get on a slightly different path it was like um and your back pain and um when like somebody's like listing this and they're like um are you on your sole purpose what um is it um do you just kind of know like you just start yeah. like i'm not i'm not doing what i'm supposed to be doing this is not it or is it like um does it always have to happen with a a, a big um <laughs> <come on. laughs> uh, it, 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 in my experience it needs something it needs um to, to quote wake us up in my case and it was back pain your case it was your shoulder you know whatever it is could have also been when i got run over. something that's that's missing in my life therefore i'm i'm here to help you uh to to actually allow yourself to align with what your soul's looking for and therefore to be the, the, the use all your abilities use all your gifts use all your skills and and add some more that that's what we're here to do uh, well, and, and well, so well, then as a soul we grow and that then expands all of creation because each soul has a part to play in expanding all of creation so so is it kind of like we can relax and just keep um tuning into what is what is our real purpose our soul here and and um and yeah there's money things that a lot of entrepreneurs are working for and that you know you ask them and it's like that's what they want it's like they, they we know they what they're looking for besides that is like you know more status among their friends or family their wife yeah. looks at them differently or their husband looks at them differently or they finally get to let be you know do something good for their kids that they didn't get when they were a kid or they get what yeah. they really want but they um they all talk about money and um but then um, if you ask them and i i have done uh, on many occasions uh i'm dissatisfied with my life I know there's more to my life. I yes, I have all this money, but the money's not giving me the the joy, the fun, the excitement that I think it should do. And that's because they're not aligned with what's the purpose. So basically tent um that's a good thing just to kind of like um reflect a bit and go are you satisfied with how life is going or not? And if you're not, it might be a good time to kind of like um for one see you and yep. um and 
just kind of like really tune in. Maybe you might avoid getting run over by a car or something. I don't know. Absolutely. And, 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 and I, I, again, I, I've seen many people that have had uh, the life-changing physical event because they've, they've it's forced them to take, as we have done, a reflective period. And then during that reflection, they say, okay, actually, what the hell am I doing? And what, what I, I have... And I've been there. Um, I have a difficult personal life. Uh, I, I haven't spent the time building a relationship with my wife or my partner. I haven't spent time building a relationship with my children, etc. And, and so that's when the reflection begins to question what is the purpose that they're here for? Is it to make another million dollars or is it to actually achieve some more fun and joy and excitement in their life? Fun, joy, and excitement. I'm going to write that one down. Fun, joy, and excitement. That's a kind of cool thing to have. <laughs> Let's see. Wow. Um, and so right now, let me just look at some of my, I tend to have little questions sometimes that I check in on. And I, do I see those? Oh, here they are. Um, let's see. So people can be going through problems and it could kind of be tuning them into like, hey, to check in, like, are you satisfied or dissatisfied? And yeah. Everybody's important, and for the entrepreneurs, that's of prime importance. With it seems to be the thing they look at a lot. Um, it seems to be the thing that a lot of people look at. And yeah. of course, you want to figure out like, um, are you doing what you came here to do? That's um, and then, and then once you once you um, and that's what kind of it it happened. It fell into place for you with living in Portugal, being a shaman. People just come stay with you. And um, and these CEOs come and have experiences, and other people come and have experiences, and life gets better by playing in this magic world. It feels. Um, what's been your biggest? Um, you know, you 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 got the stuff. They call it the trappings of success. You know, the money, the place, the beautiful wife, the beautiful lifestyle. You have a great purpose in life, and people come to see you and get healed, and get on with their purpose in life. Um, through this whole thing, um, did you, what if, was you, anything that you got that was unexpected, a transformation, a benefit, a, a thing? Um, did you get what you were looking for? You know? <laughs> I, I, I think that it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question, Ralph. Um, I think the answer to that is my um, beliefs, what I'm looking for in life has continued to evolve. So as I said earlier, we incarnate with with a purpose that doesn't mean to say that's the only purpose and and so i've had various well two or three major conversations over perhaps the last 10 years with the creator about do i wish to leave or do you wish to stay if you wish to stay you fulfilled what you came here for therefore is there something else that uh, you can assist us with and so far, uh, I've, I've said, yes, I'd be delighted to help in whatever that might be. And so, um, I don't think I've, I've mentioned this publicly before, but um, several years ago now, uh, I was asked, would I bring together uh, a group of people for, so two in the Americas and two in Europe, and would you then on one day basically put a big safety pin into the Earth's crust between the Americas and Europe? And I said, yes, OK, that sounds like a little bit of fun exercise. And the other three people said, OK, that's a fun exercise. So we did it. And uh, I thought nothing more of it until a year or two later we went on holiday to the Azores and whilst there we were having a, a presentation by a Dutch geologist because the Azores is a very interesting uh, geographically complex area and uh, he said oh and by the way I mean yes the we, we, Azores are where these three tectonic plates merge and uh, the latest information which I've just received from the oil drillers 
is that the Americas and Europe are coming back together again instead of drifting apart. So I thought, oh, okay, that's very interesting. So I've, I've done one or two other things like that, that which, uh, should we say, tickle my interest? Yeah, and it kind of gives you confirmation that, um, like you're already getting confirmation in people's lives when their lives get better. That's like a whole other level. It kind of just makes me really think like, we don't know all of what's going on. And um, like yes. you say, um, are, you know, are, is it, are you having fun? It's like, you, that's one of the things you tell me a lot is like, um, like, cause if we're, we're here to have fun. And so um, that's kind of the thing too. Um, and you're working on a project. I don't know if I can even talk about it where, um, yeah, you're like, um, cause the, one of the things that's interesting to me is, um, and we can talk about it if you want, if you're ready to talk about it, but, um, well, I was on a call with one, one of our coaches and, um, and he was, he makes a lot of money, millions of dollars a year. And, um, one, he's won multiple two comma club awards, which is, um, two commas, you know, a million dollars in one website and he's won it multiple times. And he was telling us today that if you know what's the biggest impact he could make and um and one guy you know was talking about like um helping people work for big time influencers as a way to get trained up so you, you're developing your skills while you're working for somebody else and making connections instead of just like stepping out on your own and being your own entrepreneur and so he was talking about that kind of thing and and this influencer coach guy um who was coaching him said um if he could you know he, he thought about having his own nonprofit. And, but he thought, man, you know, he already gives money to people to make wells and to um, have eyesight surgeries for yep. kids and, and, um, and feed people in all parts of the world. And, and he thought he could make his own nonprofit, but there's already people that are doing really good work. That's their expertise. And he said, you know, to tell you the truth, if, um, if, if, I, uh, if I had a, um, a way to help a nonprofit that could make um, a giant impact in millions, billions of people's lives, I truthfully would quit my work and I would just go work for them. And, um, and, and I thought, well, that's interesting because um, you're actually um, doing stuff that, um, I mean, if tectonic plates can change directions mm -hmm. and um, you could light candles and somebody can have an improvement in their health. Yes. Yeah. So there's a fascinating uh, implication from that, Ralph, uh, that I can only say, yes, let's go and do it. Yeah, it's like, a, that's what it is, isn't it? It's a say yes um, thing to um, what you're here to do. Absolutely. That's really cool. And you kind of know when you know. It's like, it's not like somebody's going to say, well, how do I know? Is it kind of like you just kind of know, right? Absolutely. Just and that's the difference. Um, you, you, you know, and, and yes, I can help people interpret and, and put it into place. And, and, and so that then they can build a plan if that's what they want to do from it. Um, but it's, it's, it's the knowing and that's back to soul connection. So yeah, knowing soul, bringing all the parts of the soul together. And as I said, the soul can split into 12 parts. And if the soul's not all together, so one part's off and it's restricting. And then the other part of being a soul connector is co connecting to the creator. And the creator then says, okay, let's go out and do X, Y, Z. And, and so that's where the knowing comes from, that you, you know the resources, whatever they're re as required, will be provided to enable the X, Y, Z to be delivered. Look, that's cool. And you're... Do you want to say anything about um, your project? You told me a little bit about it um, with CEOs. I mean, that's not like a thing. Um, or or it, I guess a good way, anything you want to share about like how people can interact with you and play okay. in this way. And, and um, I know you can't, um, you, you know, it's a limited supply of, of Gregory with the way that you, <laughs> what you want to share or, or um, how do you want to share access to um, anything that you're up to? I mean, it, 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 the, 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 pr practically, Ralph, uh, the easiest way to connect with me 
is I have a website called accelerateyourlifeandbusiness.com. Accelerate and your life and that's, that's just basically to book us um, a chat with me. Okay. So people and can then, book a chat with you. They can um, they can go to accelerateyourlifeandbusiness.com. That's an A and D, like accelerate your life, A and D business. And business, yes, and and business. Okay, so um, and then um, and yeah, and I know you can't take everybody on a personal call, um, but they can kind of at least go through the process and see if it's a good fit to talk with you. I, I, absolutely, and and that's the point, the purpose, because. Um, I, I, I will be honest and say that uh, unless somebody is willing to change whatever it is that they uh, feel they're restricted by, I'm not interested in working with them. Yeah. So this is this call is kind of like a um, like um, a, a, a meet you and see if this is a good fit kind of thing. Like if you're really absolutely, sure. absolutely, okay. absolutely, and and and, and from there. Uh, is it so what my my process would be uh, as we may have gathered from uh, what we've been talking about the ideal would be to come and visit here and we spend a few days working together and then we work in the intervening period and then over a year come back and have another uh, few days working with us uh, because this is a place of peace and calm this is well where you'll be able to do the reflection that I think yeah. is vital. And that's uh, and key. like, you know, you've got to leave your cell phone off away from you and just um, get a place where um, like Portugal. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it, it could be elsewhere, but it, 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 we have a, a slightly, um, not slightly, we, we have a magical place, to be yeah. honest. Um, because so everybody that I, that comes to visit, uh, I take to a spot on the uh, Serra da Estrela, which is the highest mountain in Portugal. And you're looking down on the world wow. and they then connect. And I took a lady up there uh, a couple of days ago and, and she said, I now feel at home. This is familiar to me because she's looking around. She can sense and it's a beautiful spot nature wise, but it's also the connection. And because you're you you you've pulled away from the world, you're connecting, and and that's where the insights can come for the individual as to what is their their direction, what is it they they then need to take action on, and then I can help package them for it, so that then it becomes an effective way forward for them. Yeah, but and my, my role is as a guide; it's not to tell them what to do. Yeah, and then and if you see something like oh go light three candles or go yeah. um do this thing it's like it yeah. um it gets things out of the way so you, like you said effective way forward that is cool so um yeah so if you want to um check out um go to accelerate your your accelerate your life and business.com gregory reese smith and see if it's something you want to explore it's not for everybody it's for people that really want to make a change and um and really questioning what's going on and where they're going and what they're here to do and and actually want to go do it um, sure. that's, um that's that's a great invitation and yeah accelerate your life and business.com gregory we said and, and th th this is how you and i ralph will build a new earth yeah and that's our purpose it is uh Yes, you can say we're here as therapists and all the rest of it, but we're not. No, we're we are here, earth. both you and I, to build a new earth. Yeah, that is it. Um, and, and Eckhart Tolle, you know, Eckhart had that thing that happened to him and he was enlightened. Mm -hmm. And um, and then this whole thing built up around him. I have a feeling he did some work along the way. And he did. He, yeah, did. he didn't just like um, sit on a park bench his entire life. So yeah, this is great, man. This has been wonderful because um, this is you know right now the big idea is that um, we are at a time. I think every generation possibly thinks that their generation is the big one, you know, the atomic age, and you could get blown up and all that. But um, the thing is, I think 
there's it's just there's so, so many people that are not doing well and they're full of anxiety and some of them are making a lot of money and some of them aren't and some of them are children and yep. even suicides at an all-time high it's an epidemic you want to talk about an epidemic it's suicide in children yep. there's something that's gone terribly weirdly wrong and um, absolutely i think you know if we can if you can help somebody if you've got a gift if there's some inkling in you there's something that's like i'm supposed to do something now is the time and it is finding what's in the way like with gregory with our work with both of us talking to us reach out and um there's a way to really tune in and, and figure out what's going on and i think you know, there's a wonderful things out there about thinking a certain way and changing your thoughts and trying to change your beliefs and just learning how to make money and, and doing this thing. There's another way to play from what I found and what Gregory's found, and it's going to spirit or whatever that is, that thing that's not, that's without the assumptions built in and um, that's not so comfortably packaged. And, um, and the thing is, it's about doing, playing in that place and, um, and then seeing a measurable result in the real world and doing what you're here to do. So um, so I'm super excited to know you and hear more about what you do and we'll do more together with, with um, doing this. And I love the way you say it's about us making the new earth. Um, that's a great, uh, that what Eckhart talked about with that is like so key. And I think that's what we're up to. So gives me we are no, not what not what I think we're up to, Ralph. We are. We are. Yeah, we are. There's a reason. I knew I met many, many, many years ago, and it's been kind of like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and now it's like, oh man, Gregory, <laughs> and Ralph. So thank you for being on and taking so much time. And, and sorry, just just one last point, Ralph. Um, and and the, back to your point about um, most people think that there is something new, and and, and this is the time to do it. Well. From a, an astrological point of view, the Mayan calendar changed from a 126,000 year cycle in 2012 to a new 26,000 year cycle. So this we are right at the forefront, which is why we are creating the new Earth. For, in other words, for the next 26,000 years. That is awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, that feels right. That is right. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, so um, let me just give you that again. Let's see. Um, where are we here? Do to do my notes. Accelerate your your life and business.com. Gregory Reese Smith. Yes. And, um, and I'll leave a link to um, healing session that we have. I'll put it in the um, in the comments as well. So reach out to us and um, and we'll see you guys all real soon again. Gregory, thank you, man. This was thank awesome. you, Ralph. It's been wonderful. Awesome. Let me go ahead and turn off all this.